JBL has possibly offered to manage Happy Corbin. Uh, did he actually appear on SmackDown recently? When I saw when the car pulled up, has, has there been anything since then? Because I've I've been out of out of whack here lately. No, uh, but uh, if he does, if he does manage Happy Corbin, I think it's the best thing to happen to Corbin hmm. because John will improve his own own screen appearance, and he gives it it gives it a whole new direction. John is great on camera because you feel like killing him half the time. You feel like just walking up to him and just slapping him. <clears throat> and he's, he's that way in real life. He's real. He's really funny. And he really get, he can get on your nerves. I got a story. I don't know if I can tell about John. Can I tell this story? You think you, you can oh, tell you don't know story. what the story is. No, I don't know what the story is. We were in, we, we were in Canada one time and we were staying at this hotel that, you know, WWF wrestlers used to have their favorite hotels. So we were staying there and I can't even tell you, it wasn't that far out of the city. And I think we were in, I don't know, Hamilton or somewhere. I don't know, <clears throat> but we were shooting pool and one guy got smart with John and John walked off to him and he said, if you don't shut up, he said, I am going to break this pool stick over your head. And the guy only, you know, John's a big guy. He's about six, five. He's about 270. So the guy heard that. Said, well, I got to go. He left. But on the way back to the room, man, I've never seen a hotel like this. They have like little meeting areas in the corners of the rooms. I don't know. I mean, in the corners of the halls. And there was a group of college students sitting there. And they recognized me and John. And they said, hey, guys. WWE, uh, WWF in those days, blah, blah, blah. John, drunker than hell, now he starts talking to him. So blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, John sits down on the couch next to this guy who's drunk, who just has his shirt on. And there we're laughing back and forth and this. And John says, uh, I, and maybe he had a shirt on. Maybe, I, I can't remember now. But John ends up, the guy so drunk, John pulls the shirt off of him. Now he's sitting there with just shorts on, and I'm going, oh, God. And then John is looking around, and he points to his shorts, and the people are looking at him, uh-uh, you're not going to do it. He pulls his shorts off. The guy still didn't wake up, and he had underwear on, and John looked at his underwear, and he reaches down and pulls his underwear off. Now the guy is sitting there totally naked, I mean, I leave, I take off, I run, I run to the room. Everybody else runs and the guy wakes up in the morning or in an hour uh, or unless somebody wakes him up and tells him he's naked. So I've never been around something like that and I don't want to be again, but I do remember seeing those kids the next morning <laughs> when we were checking out. And they was over there and they were looking at their receipts and whatever. And then they see us. They go, oh, God, there's those guys. And they take off. <laughs> I never saw them again. But I, I've never seen, I mean, John, it sounds like something John would do. But he just left the guy sitting there completely naked on the couch. Now, I don't know if that's, I guess that's breaking some kind of a law, I guess. But I don't, I don't know. But I, I've never seen that before. And I hope I never see it again. <laughs> but but John Bradshaw, my friend, he did that. And then he didn't even remember it the next day. Oh. <laughs> I said, John, you don't, you don't remember that? No. I said, John, you have to remember it. He said, I pulled his shorts off. I said, I don't know. I was gone. That's what they said you did. So I think I think but every time say. I see him, every time I see him. Yeah, every time I see him, I, I kind of remind him of that. So, I <laughs> no. think I I think I will call him up right today, right after we do this podcast, and I'm going to tell him, do you remember that? Because I wrote about it in my book. I wrote about all this stuff in my books. That's why you should get one. I wrote two books, uh, Tales of the Road uh, from a Dirt Road and uh, The World According to Dutch. 
You can get those books if you just contact me and I'll autograph it for you and everything. Dirty Dutch Mantel, gmail.com. There you go. Uh, another dull moment with uh, John Bradshaw Layfield. I spoke to John a couple of times. I was hoping to have him on my channel ages ago. And then we just sort of just yeah. did in and just for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. I didn't really pursue it. And then um, maybe, you know, as one of the guests that we should have on our show, even though we keep saying we have guests and we'll never have guests. But Oh, uh, and I told you who contacted me, didn't I? Did I email Who's you? Who's this? I did I no. email you? Oh, uh, oh, I didn't tell you then. Jamie Dundee, he wrote to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had him as a guest? No. It'd be he's interesting. tremendous. Oh, he's 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 tremendous. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about stories. And he, I mean, there wouldn't be time for my stories because of, of him telling his. He's a, he's a son of Bill Dundee. And he's likable as hell. He's not bigger than a, a, a drop of water, but very, very entertaining. If his body was the size of his mouth, he'd be 400 pounds. <laughs> I, uh, he wrote to me and said, I can't wait to come on your show and uh, ask myself some questions. 